Welcome to the channel everybody. For today's tutorial video, we are going to be covering the cultures of the unreal world. And this is literally the second choice you're presented with after you've decided whether you want custom, easy, or too easy. It is an extremely important choice and you just get this list with these strange names that are hard to pronounce. There is an encyclopedia entry for each one. So if we hit F1, it will tell us a little bit about them but most of it is flavor or just kind of the lore of the culture itself and its ties to the real history. There are some specifics such as the fact that, for instance, the Kamo here are fierce fighters and have to take on the Nerpes quite a bit. This is the culture I would go with if I wanted to make a fighter, but there's also some key information that's not included up front with your cultural selection. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So after that, we are going to be making a character for each one of the cultures too and we're going to check out the gear that they get and see if there's anything special that their culture has an influence on their gear now i will say that the gear is random when we start but there might be some influence from the culture certainly it'll be interesting to find out and don't worry you won't have to sit through the character creation for each one i'm just going to show you the important things but like i said we've got a couple of subjects to cover for the cultural video Oh, and a big shout out to the commenter who suggested this topic. It is not something I would have considered for some reason and thought about, but great idea. I'm really happy and I'm looking forward to making this video. So if anybody else out there has any suggestions for videos, check the tutorial list in the playlist down below in the description. See if I've got one made. If I don't, leave me a comment. Let me know and I will most likely make a video for it. But anyway, like I said, let's get started going down the list of cultures. Okay, and before we get to the fun part of making a new character for each culture, I wanted to talk about, like I said, some of the things that your choice of culture will impact, but isn't really presented or told to the new player right up front. So the first thing is the physical profile, which is very important. Strength, endurance, dexterity, agility, and speed, these things are all going to greatly impact just how good of a hunter and a fighter your character is. And the cultures that you choose do impact this. Now, there's a great chart on the wiki, so if you really want to study it and tailor a character for a specific physical profile, check that chart out. I'll link, pop it up here on the screen briefly, of course, but what it basically shows is that each culture has a different weighting distribution for the physical profile stats here. So, for instance, we've got a Kamalanian here, Kamo the Kamalanian, and the weighting is is most in favor of strength for their culture. They also have a fairly high weighting in endurance. So in other words, if I re-roll this character several times, well, that guy's pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty small overall, but you can see that the strength is fairly consistently high for the Kamo. Same with endurance. There's a few aberrations occasionally when you're re-rolling, but yeah, for the most part, strength stay because that's highly weighted for the Kamo. And like I said, each culture has a different weighting so check those out if you're interested in a specific profile and you don't want to sit there and re-roll constantly hoping to get lucky all right and now we are on the skills page which gives you an indication of what the second factor that your cultural choice will impact obviously your skills and again that's not really made clear to the new player right up front but you can't really fault these old school games that's part of their charm is that steep learning curve they've got but hey that's why i'm here is to help you out with the tutorials but let's just take a look here you can see as a kamalanian uh, a couple of the skills that jump right out are the tracking so if we look at the chart again on the wiki it's really helpful there you can see that there is a preference each culture has a couple of preferences and then they have the skills that they don't like at all that they have negative numbers for so if you want to play with the custom start where you can't really distribute and take away too many points then definitely investigate those cultures and if you for instance want an agricultural play then there's a couple of options which are going to start off a lot more gifted so to speak with that particular skill so pretty simple straightforward that's just like i say another one of the very crucial 
parts of character creation that's impacted by the culture, which isn't necessarily clear right up front. All right, and before we start taking a look at the characters and their gear and talking to about the specifics of the cultures, let's just take a look at the map here. I wanted to point out that there is an option to re-roll your character within their home culture too, which might not be immediately apparent to a new player, but instead of just randomly rolling across the world, you can focus in if you hit the H button on just one culture, whatever your culture is that you've chosen. So if you're an owl tribe person, you're, you're starting with just being the white area when you hit H. But as a combo, we start here in the green. So again, just an optional choice you can do. If you don't want this, you don't have to. But it is something tied to the culture, so I figured I should probably mention it. All right, we're taking a quick stop off here at the scenario screen before we jump into our first culture, the Kamalanian. But I wanted to show that I will be choosing the Unreal World scenario for the, each one of these characters. And again, I won't show it each time, but just wanted to point that out because it is kind of the most basic or general of gear selections that you get. And again, we're going to be consistent throughout so we can see if there's any differences amongst the cultures. All right, and we are here with Kamo the Kamalanian, our very first culture we're going to take a quick look at. Now, like I said, the physical profile is affected by the cultural selection, so I'm going to show this to you for each one. Now, obviously, you saw me re-roll this guy, but from now on, for each other culture, I'll just choose the very first one that's given to me. Now, for you as a new player, you're probably going to want to re-roll a few times till you get a good profile, but it does it is affected by your culture, so I just wanted to show that to you. And the second thing I'll note is the skills for the Kamalanian. He, they are best at tracking, as you kind of saw on the skills page, but we'll touch on this for each culture as we talk about the specific ones. They also have a couple of points in some of the martial skills, so the Kamo are also good with the knife unarmed combat and a few others here there so again check that chart for more extensive details but let's take a look at the gear that he starts off with oh, okay nothing flashy or too great here hunting knife and a staff now i will tell you that the food just disregard that that's going to be the same for every character or pretty close the clothing and especially the weapons and items will be what's probably most affected by the culture but um, for instance, I know from having played Kamalanians quite a bit, sometimes you get a Kamo spear, which is a good spear for fighting large game and humans as well. So unfortunately, this time he didn't start with one. I was hoping he would, but otherwise, pretty standard gear start. Like I said, we'll just check that just for fun. We're going to see what gear they're carrying. But that's a quick breakdown of the Kamo culture. So let's move on to the next one on our list. Okay, and the second culture on the list is the Drick culture, one of my favorites for trading. Their culture on the map is definitely the wealthiest, but in terms of the characters and what they start with, their skills are fairly well-rounded. In fact, they don't have any super high bonuses in any particular skill. They especially don't like tracking, though, strangely enough, but they're kind of an all-arounder in terms of their skill weightings. But uh, let's check out that physical profile. So rather small individual again kind of random so don't go relying too much on this plus you're going to want to re-roll and stuff but just thought i'd show that off real quick let's take a look here at the gear oh now i do have some familiar familiarity with creating the drink characters as well they often start off with some good gear you can see look at this he's even got armor to start off with that's impressive and it's fine quality so fine male mittens fine leather boots fine carving axe, very, very good quality gear this guy's got. So kind of a trade-off, not a super great skill specialist, but they definitely are a bit wealthier than most cultures. All right, and next we're talking about the Kisi or Kis culture. And if we take a quick look at the physical profile, you can see he's not too bad overall. Um, pretty low agility, but again, that could just be a random fluke. Not too terrible. And if we're talking about the skills, the Kis are the most gifted at Timbercraft. They do have a two-point bonus for that skill. They've also got a couple of single-point bonuses for fishing, tracking, trapping, and a few other things. Um, nothing too negative 
negative either. Pretty good all-arounders. Sounds like they're relatively gifted hunters as well. Let's take a quick look at that gear. A knife, a woodsman's axe. He's got some fine clothing, though. No doubt about it. I'd say this is a pretty good set of clothing. Definitely not going to take him through winter, but um, overall, it's good quality. He could trade up for some good furs and make a, a nice set of wor winter clothing out of that. Okay, and next we are talking about the Remy culture. One of my personal favorites. I've spent a lot of time with the Remy's. They've helped me fight the Nerpeasant in my trials here in the Unreal World. But they let's take a look at that physical profile. He started off pretty good. Very high will and intelligence with this particular guy starting off. So interesting to see that. Now let's talk about the skills for the Remy. They have a double bonus in the trapping skill to start right off with. Also, additionally, they get a single point bonus in agriculture and herb lore. One of the only cultures that gets a bonus for both of those two skills, which I think kind of complement each other very well. There are other cultures that are better at agriculture, but again, none of those have also a bonus in herb lore. So I think the Remy would be a good, good choice for an agriculture playthrough if you really wanted to get invested in the herbs and stuff. But let's take a look at that gear. Rough hunting knife, rough, oh, ooh, fine hand axe. And pretty standard looking clothes. He does have some fine stuff here. So we're getting pretty lucky with the clothing we've started with uh, across all our characters, I think, except for that first combo guy. But there you go. Just a quick peek at that gear. And the Sarto culture is next. Take a quick look at that physical profile. Again, a very in high intelligence and will character. Everything else is kind of crap, though. He's got some good strength on him, though, this guy. But um, if we talk about the skills, this is one of the cultures that is highly advanced in agriculture. So they do get two bonus starting points in the agricultural skill but they have negative two in the herb lore. So an interesting mix. Now, I should point out too, if you're not certain, when I say they have negative points in the start, it doesn't mean you can't use that skill. They're just not going to be as good starting off with it. You're going to have to use it a lot more in order to catch up, you know, to where he would be, for instance, with his agriculture, because they do get that bonus. But other than that, let's take a look at the inventory here. Broad knife, hand axe. Oh, he's got some plant-based stuff on. The birch bark shoes, linen trousers, woolen cloak, shirt, fur cap. Okay, he's got some animal stuff too. Well, not a huge change here. This is very, very minimal, honestly. But, um, all right, there we go. And I should mention too, the Sarto are one of the cultures the wiki says are a fairly wealthy culture, good for like trading and finding armor. I can't vouch for that because I don't spend a lot of time in their cultural territory. As I've said many times, I always go to the Drick culture, but I figured I should mention it. And we are now on to the Islander culture. Very interesting culture for sure. One of the reasons I'm glad I mentioned the map early on, because if you stayed within their cultural boundaries using that H key as the option like I showed, you could end up in an island start, which is a really good challenge if you want to learn how to make a boat or to barter to get a punt and then sail across the ocean to the mainland. The Islanders might be a good cultural option to start but anyway let's take a look here this guy's pretty average all around really good eyesight though i will say that <laughs> and if we're talking about skills now they are probably one of the most skilled in this game but they have some very particular preferences obviously fishing is no surprise here they also have a very high skill set in carpentry so they get two bonus points in carpentry and they have three bonus points in weather lore, which, I mean, I'm looking at the list right now. I don't think there's any other culture that has three starting bonus points in any skills. So again, these are a very skilled people. It's just they have a particular skill set that's fishing, weather lore, and building really sturdy buildings. But uh, let's hit that inventory. Now, this is interesting. 
fine trident. That's a fishing implement. Obviously, it's a spear, so it can be used for fighting and blocking. I've been told this is the best blocking spear in the game, but trident is good for fishing as well. So that that's definitely something that was probably affected by the culture. But I'm glad to see something finally was out of all the inventories we've looked at up to this point. And now we are taking a look at the Koi Vula culture. Guy's got a pretty decent physical profile here. Again, if you want to know the weightings for what their physique turns out to be for each culture, check that wiki. I'm not going to cover each one. It's pretty detailed, but um, nonetheless, you're going to end up re-rolling a bunch of times anyway. I just want to show this off since the culture does have an effect on it. But anyway, let's talk about the Koi Vula skill set. Now, these guys are a Another of the agricultural, so they do have two starting bonus points in agriculture. They have a negative starter in herb lore, though, so keep that in mind. This is the reason why I mentioned that I like the Remi, in my opinion, because they do have that balance. But the Koivula also have two starting bonus points in the skill of timber craft, too, so that'll be good. If you're looking at crafting up your own farm implements and stuff, I guess. But let's take a quick peek at the inventory. Fine spear, fine knife. That's really nice, yeah. Leather boots, fine nettle trousers, nettle tunic, woolen cowl. All right, some decent stuff. That fine spear right there, that's, that's a valuable item. You could probably get a dog and some dried meat out of that. But overall, pretty good starting set of gear. And next we've got the Koika tribe. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I don't know how to pronounce this one. But this is probably the tribe I'm the least familiar with. Let's take a quick peek at the physical profile. Not the greatest for sure down there. He's got really good hearing and a smell of taste touch. Or smell taste, I should say. But um, overall, in terms of skills, from what I'm seeing here, these guys are good at fishing. They definitely get two bonus points to start off in fishing, but not much else. They've got a selection here for the ritual, the physician, weather lore. They do get a few bonuses for that, but I can tell you they don't like warfare at all, man, because they have a negative two in the crossbow, the flail, the shield, the sword. Even the axe has a negative one. So these seem like a very peaceful people, although they do have one point to start off with within the bow so that's probably mainly for hunting i would suppose just right off the bat they don't seem like a very warlike people but hey that's a good thing right so gear wise fine broad knife small trident again another fishing skill here another fishing people a northern knife first time we've seen this this is a good one presented by from the northern peoples very nice yeah yeah, yeah. used in hide working that's a good knife for sure. All right. The, look, he's also got a fine wooden mug. Very nice. Very nice. His clothing is not that great. He's got some woolen trousers, which are nice quality, but his leather boots and his undershirt kind of suck. But overall, not a bad start. But um, like I say, the interesting culture that I've never played with. All right, and now everybody's favorite, the Owl Tribe. So if we take a look at this guy's physical profile, it jumped out at me right away. We haven't seen too much influence from the culture, I would suppose, so far. But this guy is the epitome of an Owl Tribesman. Look at this. Dexterity, agility, speed, off the charts. But his strength and endurance, not so great. So this is definitely a physical profile that epitomizes the culture it comes from, for sure kind of funny there i like that but in terms of the skills i'll tell you that the owl tribes are also very impressive they are highly skilled people they do have quite a few negative twos like to the sword the crossbow surprisingly they don't like negative two to the flail the shield also they're not very good at swimming apparently but they've got quite a few bonuses as well so obviously they get two bonus points in the bow starting off with and herb lore they get two points tracking they get two points 
hide working they get two points and there's a few one single point bonuses too across the board in ritual physician or weather lore but i tell you what like i said they're very skilled people there's just a few things they don't like to do but let's take a quick peek at that inventory ah uh, i was hoping they would get a bow and arrow but so far none of the characters we've seen have started with one which is a little surprising but he did get the fine northern spear which is a very very good spear and obviously Obviously, the Owl Tribe are one of the northernmost tribes, so that's not too surprising. But it actually tells you here, this spear can be used as a ski stick, which is very good. That's, it's not something to be taken uh, for granted, because it basically saves you weight. You don't need to carry both the spear and the ski stick, but that's just a totally side point. In addition, the rest of his gear is looking pretty good. This guy's got some of the most extensive clothing we've seen here of all the characters, but overall, like I said, a little disappointed. I was hoping the Owl Tribesman would get a bow, but oh well. And finally, we are taking a look at the Seal Tribe, one of the cultures which I personally have overlooked quite a bit. I almost never play with these guys, but let's look at the physical profile. Oh yeah, I can kind of see why. No, I'm just kidding. He does have good eyesight and hearing, no doubt about it. His intelligence and will is good. Yeah, physical stats though, not that great. I would have re-rolled this guy certainly a few times, but no worries, no worries. Now, in terms of the skills, they've got a few negatives no doubt about it the sword they don't like the axe they don't like but as you might expect they have two starting points in fishing and they get two points in the spear too so i foresee that these guys are spear fishermen probably and i imagine they probably catch some seals too they also have two bonus starting points in ritual and in weather lore so that's interesting if you want to get in tune with the natural world and the spiritual world this might be a cold Culture for you, no doubt about it. And let's take a look at the inventory. Oh, yep, he's got the fisher's knife and a northern spear. Well, it's not a trident, but you can still fish with that, no doubt about it. The footwear, linen trousers, shirt, mittens, not that great. Not that great in terms of his clothing. Ah, oh, the first guy I think we've seen that started with the snare trap, which it's not totally uncommon. I mean, we've seen more of these now technically than we've seen bows and arrows, that's for sure. But uh, anyway, that's a good look at the inventory there for the Seal Tribe guy. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this little brief walkthrough of the cultures here of the Unreal World. And again, I'd not trying to cover too much of the lore or the history just what's important for gameplay and for new players to understand so i really appreciate everybody who's tuned in for this one i had a lot of fun making it appreciate everybody who's left me comments on these tutorial videos suggestions are always welcome and i am trying to get to each one of those videos as i go but thank you so much for joining me here in this tutorial hit that like button subscribe to the channel and i will see you all on the next one